Hey, special educators, this is Jennifer from Positively Learning. Thank you so much for joining me here. This video is titled, Is it an accommodation or a modification? Now, as special educators, I know that you know the difference, but you may find yourself in a position, uh, maybe you're sitting at the IEP meeting table, or maybe you're delivering professional development, where you are going to be explaining the differences, providing definitions and examples. So this video is to support you. I am also going to link this blog post that we're referencing. It's a great read um, that you could read it and then also save it for future reference. All right, so accommodations versus modifications. Now, they're often misunderstood and grouped together. And it makes sense. Many times I see um, like IEP documents where it says accommodations and modifications. So it's easy to see how they could be um, thought of as maybe a group or interchangeable. And that's definitely not the case. They're very different. All right, so let's quickly define them. I wanna use an analogy for accommodations. And accommodations, I wanna think of the general education curriculum, and I want to picture it as this big blue block or brick. So in your mind, you know, think of this big block, like I think of this big rectangle called general education curriculum, and it's right in the center, and it's concrete. It is not a moving target. It's there. Now, accommodations are all the supports all around this brick, and the supports that are there to help a student access the general education curriculum. Access is like my favorite word. So it may look like extended time or having the problems read out loud, assistive technology, uh, graphic organizers, like visual structures, anything that helps a student access that big blue block. Now, the big blue block has not changed, which means our students are gonna be using that curriculum the same expectations, the same levels of mastery, but they may have different supports in place to get there. I do ask myself the question when I'm determining what's appropriate for accommodations, can this student access the curriculum without this accommodation? If the answer is yes, I do not put it on. Accommodations are not nice to haves. They are a legit no, they will not be able to access the general education curriculum without this accommodation. Now, do we know for sure? No, but that's what our role is, right? Like we have background knowledge. We're doing our very best. We're gathering information we don't have from assessments, from observations, and so on, so we can make the best decisions. All right, so that's what I think of for accommodations. Modifications. Well, remember that big blue brick? Well, it might be green now. It might be red, it might be rainbow. It might be blue, but there, it looks different. Something has changed with the actual curriculum. And I will say the majority of the time where we're talking about a change, we're talking about a level of expectation. So maybe the curriculum has changed completely and it's at a different level of performance criteria for a student to access a skill or concept. Um, it might be below grade level. It might be a blue, but there's completely different grading systems with it. So the level of performance criteria that we had with accommodations has also changed. So modifications are the changes to the curriculum and how a student is not accessing the general education curriculum, but interacting with this change. All right, so I think of modifications, and maybe this is completely inappropriate, but I think of them as quite serious. I am not going to modify anything for a child until I am, we've really tried out things, we know things, we have the information to support that decision. To me, that's like kind of a heavy decision. I want to make sure that it is very clear. All right, of course. For everything we do, right? All right, so here's a quick graphic. Feel free to use this if you want. If you're presenting, here it is. You've got it. Um, contrasting accommodation versus modification. So now let me answer this. Who's providing these things? Well, like I said, for modifications, that is a quite a heavy 
educational decision, then most likely any kind of modifications, well, I mean, I would say 99% of the time, in my experience, is not going to be done in a general education classroom setting. It is going to be done in a resource room or some type of pullout services um, by the special education teacher. Now, accommodations are put on an IEP to really kind of provide a protection for that student's learning. I always think of it as if they left our school tomorrow, would they still get what they need? Because we know IEP is a legal document that will travel with them. And the answer will be yes, they will, because we've indicated these accommodations. So that's the same thing within the school. Who's providing those accommodations? Well, it's really anybody working with that child because everybody's going to have, everybody working with that child is going to have access to that IEP. Now, most often we're going to be also looking at services and how they're delivered and whether it's a special education teacher who's the majority of the time delivering those accommodations because they are working with that child. So that's another conversation. All right, now let me show you what I have here. This is an idea for professional development. I do have it ready to deliver. If you do not have this bundle, you'll see the link in the blog post, but let me tell you what's in it because maybe you have these resources yourself. All right, so I have a quick slideshow defining accommodation defining modification that you could present and that way you could you know, definitely have some kind of interactive component about comparing, contrasting them, and so on. But then what I also have are some examples. And the examples, you can read them. You also could do like technically a group activity. And I know that that might bring an eye roll to some people sitting in a PD. I understand that completely. But you could have a list of accommodations, a list of modifications, and then you could sort them, like which one's which, and then you could go over like, how did you know? Or you could have teachers writing down some lists of what they consider like accommodations that have been really effective. Maybe you can brainstorm a list. I have a list provided in this PD, and I have them sorted by category of style of accommodation, whether it's presentation or whether it's student response setting or pacing or timing. So I also have some different intervention strategies that could be considered for appropriate accommodations. All right, that is that. So what do you think? I'm going to slowly go back up in this blog post just to show you what is here for you. Um, definitely click the link and save it. Let me know if you have any questions. I think is really important information, especially just because I, it's just often a misunderstanding of grouping them together when they are completely different. Hope that was helpful for you. And let me know if you have any questions or any other future topics. I'd be happy to jump on here and offer that support. Thanks so much for watching.